Ken, I'm the assistant campus pastor here. Can we give it up for Pastor Ken? Come on, I'm just so thankful for his vision to have five communicators up here today to go ahead and preach the word to you in five minutes each. So excited about what God's going to do in each of our lives. We're starting off today with Elijah Eldridge. He is over our Alive Nights, our college ministry. So shameless plug, if you are here in college, man, he's your guy. Connect with him. He'll help get you plugged in. Next, we're going to have Leslie Pierce. Yeah. Some of you know Leslie, evidently. Well, she's over our connections center outside. So she's the smiling face that you see when you get here. Uh, man, so excited, and, and she's just so passionate about what she's going to talk to you today. So I'm excited to hear that. Next, we have Travell Davis. Travell. Travell helps with our pastoral interns. He does such a great job there, scheduling them, overseeing them. Man, just a tremendous man of God. Can't wait to hear from him. Jacob Jones is our next speaker. Now, Jacob heads our prayer ministry, so if you're looking for a way to get plugged in, come and pray with us on Wednesday nights, every night, Wednesday night, right here in the sanctuary. And finally, Joanna Weldon. <laughs> Joanna is a tremendous woman of God. God has uh, given her a heart for women's ministry, and we're going to hear just a little bit about that. So here's the thing. We honor the word no matter who gives the word here at Alive Church. Amen? So as they get up and speak, I want you to shout them down. If they say something good, say amen. Amen. Let's practice right now. Say amen. amen. That's right. Preach it. Come on. Yeah. So here's the thing. Stay on your feet. Make them welcome as Elijah comes up. What's up, Alive Church? How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Well, like you said, my name is Elijah Eldridge. I help lead the college ministry here called Alive Nights. And so we meet up once a month to have an awesome worship night. And this month we're going to do a rooftop worship session on top of the parking garage downtown. So find me after service. I'd love to connect with you guys, talk to you more about that. September 24th, by the way. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but my whole life I grew up a pastor's kid. I went to church every Sunday. I knew God existed. I knew he was real, but I didn't really want to live my life for him. I kind of like treat him like a drive through I was like, I know you're there, but when I need you, I'll go to you. When I need a miracle, I'll ask you for one. But other than that, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to walk my own way. And it wasn't until high school that I realized, you know what? This is not a religion. This is a relationship. Yeah. That it's not just something I can go to whenever I need. It's someone who wants to live inside me and with me and direct my path. And so I began to realize, you know what, I need to trust God with my everything. Trust God and surrender to him with my whole entire life, not just when I need him. And so I feel like there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians maybe around the world today that walk around and they treat God like this drive through They go to him and they ask him for a miracle only when they need it. And then they go and walk on their own way. You know, God, I need a miracle. I need you to save my family. I need you to provide a house for me. I need you to provide a car for me. If you only do this, then I can start stepping into what you've called me to do and start trusting in you. But until then, I need a miracle. Well, in John 6, there's a story where Jesus fed 5,000 people. And so he took five loaves of bread and two fish. And he began to multiply it, and everybody ate until they were satisfied. And they began to worship him like, wow, this is the Messiah. We, be we believe in him. This is the king. This is the one that we've been waiting for. And then Jesus heard this, and they he knew that they were going to take him by force, so he ran to, the to Capernaum. These 5,000 people chased him to Capernaum, and this is what it said in John 6, 25 through 27. When they finally found him, they asked him, teacher, how did you get here? Jesus replied to them saying, let me make this very clear. You came looking for me because I fed you by a miracle not because you believe in me. Why would you strive for food that is perishable and not be passionate to seek the food of eternal life, which never spoils? I, the Son of Man, am ready to give you what matters most, for God the Father has destined me for this purpose. Let's go back to the beginning. I want to go back to the beginning and just repeat one scripture. Let me make this very clear. You came looking to me because I fed you by a miracle, not because you believe in me. You know, it's, it's, miracles are great, and they can, they can do so much in our lives. And God, if you could just heal me, if you just do this and that, would you just come through in my life? I just need a miracle. But God is saying that a miracle only lasts a moment, and I have something that's going to last forever, and that's myself. Come on. A, miracle, a miracle is good, but God has something greater, which is eternal life. Well, then they begin to ask him, how do I work for God? What is, how do I do that? How do I trust? How do I walk into what you fully called me to do? What is that right thing to do? If I don't need a miracle, I need you. Well, what does that look like? What well, Jesus replied to them in John 6, 29, saying this, the work you can do for God starts in believing in the one he sent. So it just, it just means to believe. I, I believe you. I, I, I've been saved for 30 years. I've been saved my whole entire life. I've gone to church. I've done the right things. I mean, I, I walk around believing and knowing that he exists. But, but what am I missing? 
Well, the Greek word for believe is pistuo. And that means to be obedient to the word of God. Putting aside all your self-reliance and wholly trusting and relying on God for all things. Not some things, all things. You, you can go into your work tomorrow and you can start trusting God. You can ask for that miracle, but God is saying, just trust me because I have everything you need. If you just step into the confidence I'm here with you, then you can start believing in me and you can start trusting me. God is good enough. A miracle is good, but God is greater. There's this analogy or this is actually a true story. There's this guy who had crossed the Grand Canyon with a, with a bike. He would ride a bike across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope. He'd go back and forth. And then one of his last stunts, he took a wheelbarrow. And he walked back and forth. He said, hey, do you guys believe in me? Can you believe I can do this? And they said, yeah, we believe in you. Woo! And he would drive the wheelbarrow up to the other side of the Grand Canyon. He'd walk back. He said, do you believe in me? Can you believe in me? You see, I can do this. They said, yes. All right, then which one of you is going to hop in the wheelbarrow first? <laughs> and it felt quiet. They all, they all went, ooh. <laughs> And he said, and there's a difference, I, I heard that story, and I said, there's a difference between believing and trusting. You can believe that God's real, but it's not until you start trusting him with everything that you begin to walk in his confidence and walk in him. And so I just want to challenge you guys today, if that's you, and that's you, and you, I'm not even speaking to you today, I want you guys to start trusting in God. Take at least two weeks. There's a, there's a whole challenge we do, it's like a six-month challenge, and Travel's going to speak about that in a second. But there's a, whole, there's a whole thing, if you just start trusting in God, I just want to challenge you guys to take that step. Take that step in faith, because we have a saying here that if you take one step towards God, he'll take two steps towards you. Thank you, guys. That was good. Well, good morning, guys. My name is Leslie Pierce, and like Pastor Stephen said, I have the awesome privilege of leading the connection team here at Alive. And so a little bit about me is that I'm a recovering control freak. Any control freaks in the house? Controlling? Okay. So a few of you. Um, but ever since I was younger, I mean, I try to control everything. Um, I'm the youngest out of my two sisters, but I act like if I'm their mom. Um, even out of my group of friends, they would label me like the mom of the group. Like, you know you're controlling when your friends call you that. And so... One way that I'm still controlling, and I'm still working on it, is that I actually work for my mom's company. Um, and so sometimes I forget that she's the boss and I try to be the boss. You know, I try to control the company. And, and I thought when I was studying this, I'm like, man, how is it so often? You know, I know that my mom knows the company. She's the one who formed it from the ground up. She had the vision for it. She knows what will make it succeed and what will make it fail. And how is it the same way in our own lives that we know God, we know that he created us, we know he formed us in our mother's womb, he, we know that he knows what's best for us, but we still struggle to trust him. And so we hold on to that control. And so that may be because of lack of trust, maybe you feel like your expectations may be threatened, or just a fear of failure. But the main reason when I was studying I realized is that our control is rooted in fear. We're afraid of what tomorrow holds. We're afraid to fully trust that God knows our tomorrow, that he knows what we need before we ask. And so I love Colossians 2.7 because it says, let your roots, your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. When we begin or start a relationship with God, you know, not religion, like Elijah said, a relationship, we need to begin to unplant ourselves for, or unplant the roots that we've allowed to be planted into fear and plant ourselves in the truth of who God is and of his promises and his faithfulness that he knows exactly what we need before we even ask. And so maybe you're here today and you're like, man, that is me. I've been struggling to trust God with whatever it is. It could be the littlest things to the biggest things, um, tr struggling to trust him in your day, to struggling to trust him in school or in work, I just want to give us a few key points of how do we let go of control and trust God. And so number one is don't depend on you. I love Proverbs 3, 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And when we realize that his ways are higher than our ways, when his thoughts are higher than our ways, we don't need to cling on to ourselves. We don't need to be leaning on ourselves. We can lean on God and on who he is. And so number two is Put God first in your life. Proverbs 3, 6 says, and in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Like I said, we can ask the Holy Spirit from the littlest things for, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do with my day today? He wants to be a part of it to the biggest things of, Lord, should I buy this house? Should I not? Should I go to this school? Should I get this degree? God wants to be in the center of it all. And when we pursue him, when we pursue that relationship, we realize we don't need to control it. We don't need to know it all. We can just trust in who he is and his faithfulness. And so number three is to rest in God's love. Matthew 28, 20 says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. And 1 John 4, 18, it says, 
There is no fear in love, but perfect, perfect Sorry, perfect love drives out all fear. And when we realize that our God loves us so much, that he's a loving father, we don't need to control and be afraid of what tomorrow holds. Our God is with us through it all. He loves us. He has never left us nor forsaken us. And so I really just want to challenge you today is don't hold on to that control into your life. Surrender it and give it to God. He is with you. He loves you. He's never left you nor forsaken you. And he holds your tomorrow. And it's for good thing. He works all things together. So whatever storm you're going through, I know we're going through a hurricane right now. Well, guess what? God's in control of it too. Just like the regular storms of your life. Don't hold on to control. Hold on to the truth of who our God is. Thank you, guys. All right. What's up, Alive Church? Y'all loving this right now? This is good, right? All right. So I'm going to try and make the midway, you know, continue. All right. So again, my name is Travell. Um, I have the honor here of just leading the way and assisting our pastors and also any speakers that come up here and just bring the word. Um, I'm also uh, a coach in our live groups. And man, I just love you here, man. A live church is a fire church. Right? That's right. All right. So yeah, man, this is my wife right here up front, Team Natural, Ashley. And that's our son. His name is also Travell. We call him TJ. He looked like me and act like me. So y'all pray for us, please. All right. All right, so yeah, just going back to my background. So about nine years ago, uh, I was about 18, I got saved, right? So the whole next year after I, you know, gave my life to God or whatever, at least I thought I gave my life to God, it turned out to be like the, the worst year. When I say it just escalated real quick, things got bad. Like every area of my life, financially, you know, my lifestyle, you know, I was struggling with a little depression that year, anywhere you turn, right? Until I came to grips with, you know, I could not move forward until my destiny bringing in old baggage from the past, still bringing in old forgiveness, still bringing in old friends, still bringing in old decision making and stuff like that, right? So I came to grips with the only way I'm going to really be able to do this thing and be effective at it is if I fully surrender. And that's what I noticed I didn't do. I stand here right now as a product of one of Pastor Ken's famous six month challenges, like Elijah mentioned earlier. So that's basically you choosing to go for six months giving God everything that you everything that you have. I mean, jumping right in and just going all in and just seeing what happened. And if you don't see no change in six months, hey, call it a liar, go do what you do. Do your thing. But if it does work and you see something different, then you try another six months and another and then see how does that turn out to years without you even knowing that, man, I can do this thing. All right, so a quick definition for surrender is to give up or hand over a person, possession, or right to a powerful influence. Anybody here see God as a powerful influence? Yeah, right, okay, so it's not just me. So one thing I learned then that, y'all might want to tweet this. Receiving God's best starts with giving God your best. Again, you don't get God's best until you actually give him your best. So, so what does giving God your best look like? Any married people in here? So I would like to think when you was at the altar and you said your vows to your spouse, you didn't just do it and just say like, hey, you know, I promise to just be with you for as long as I can and wear the ring for as long as I can. No, like you, I would like to think that you vowed to them that you would give them your very best you know, for eternity, right? You know, I also, so I also found out that there's a way that we can determine on whether we really surrender. Everybody say, how do I know? Do I know? I'm glad y'all asked, all right? So the way that we know if we really surrender, you will be tested. Any college students in here? Y'all know y'all gonna be tested. <laughs> so when I say tested, you know, something, you're gonna get an attack either on your marriage or on your finances. Any of y'all have plans for your life? Y'all know y'all have all type of plans, but at some point, God gonna wanna scratch them plans and you're gonna be tested to see, okay, am I really surrendered? Did I really give up what it is I wanted to do, right? So yeah, that, that was me. I tried, to, I tried to control my life, kind of like what Leslie's talking about, being in control, right? And I noticed when it, another way to tell if you really surrender, what giving God's best really look like is when you get in a place to your life where you no longer living by your feelings, but you start living by your feeling. Yeah, did y'all catch that? Like not F-E-E-L, not your feelings, but your feeling, F-I-L-L. -L. That's what you would start living. Everybody say bars. Come on, man. Y'all like, y'all, y'all getting this? All right. So two takeaway keys I want y'all to know. Number one, let Jesus take the wheel. 
Just let him drive. He, he a much better driver than you. Mark 8, 35, it says, those who want to save their, their own lives will give up true life. But those who give up their lives for me and the good news will have true life. So that's basically saying we will, run, we will walk around trying to save our own lives, trying to control our own lives, and not even notice we missing out on life trying to save our life. And that's crazy. So, God, like, so the Holy Spirit, the other day, I promise it's like two days before this mess, I said, I got to say this. The Holy Spirit gave me the other day that when we're living our lives that way, we're literally walking around committing spiritual DUI. We steady trying to drive the car of our life, but steady under the influence of the world. We steady under the influence of our family that might have taught us some jacked up stuff. We steady under the influence of our friends. We steady under the influence of everything that's on TV. So y'all don't commit spiritual DUI, because that's bad. Bad things happen. And number two, it's time to give up some lifestyle decisions. It's time to make some lifestyle decisions and some changes that may be uncomfortable. There are some things that we just cannot sit around and just ask, is this right, is this wrong? No, you're gonna have to make some decisions that you know is right for you, that you know this has been keeping you back. And I just wanna challenge you guys today as I close to, what, to just go home and ask yourself, what is it I need to put on the altar that may not be in the Bible, but I just know I need to move on. And that's, that's what I want y'all to do right now, just surrender it to God, throw it up here. So good. I love it, Travail. A spiritual DUI. I don't want one of those. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Jacob Jones, and I serve on the prayer ministry here at Alive Church. Um, I just got married last month, so soon my wife will be sitting up here. We're prophesying that. Amen. Well, guys, today we're going to talk about the power of our words. And the scripture that I want to go to is Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18 and 21, if you have your Bibles. If not, I think they'll put it up on the screen behind me. They'll put it up there. It's all good. We've got to speak with the power of our words up there now. Y'all heard the thunder? Just It's going to happen. So anyways, well, guys, uh, this, this scripture, if we can get up there, it'll talk about the power of our words. And, and it says, in, in, in the power of the tongue is life and death. Do you know how important that, do we have, amen, there we go. Come on, spoke that right into existence. Come on, somebody. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the what? Power of the tongue. I want you to know today that your words have power. That the things that you speak, they're not just going out into the atmosphere and falling somewhere. That they actually carry weight and that they actually carry power. And I want to illustrate this. On the death side of words, I remember when I was younger, when I was in first grade, there was negative words spoken over me. I remember people teased me for having big teeth and big ears. They used to call me Dumbo. Well, praise God that I've grown into my ears and my teeth a little bit now, so they don't look as funny. But I remember these words, and they actually, I mean, they carried weight. It hurt. Has anybody had a negative word spoken over them? I mean, it doesn't feel good, right? So these words actually started to compile, and I actually started to internalize these words through my junior high and high school years. And, and what happened was I had, I had a fear of not being accepted by my classmates, and, and I had anxiety that started to crop up. And then rolling into high school and college years, I, I had panic attacks and sleepless nights, and this all rolled into an addiction that lasted for 10 years. And it was all because of the power of our words. Yeah. You see, you can use your words to build somebody up or tear somebody down. You literally, the words that you speak can bring death over somebody, like, like the path that I took. I was headed down, literally, if life was fair, then I wouldn't be alive today. That's just the honest truth. But on the other side of the things, you can speak life into situations and bring life in people. Yeah. And I started searching the power of words, and, and there's a scientist that did studies on water, and what he did was he froze different samples of water. And he looked at the crystalline structure. One was a fresh water that he pulled, and it made these beautiful snowflake-like crystalline structures. Another was a polluted water, and, and it really wouldn't form any crystalline structure. And, and his assistant said, well, what if we speak to this water? What, ha what happens then? So... As you can see, they would, speak, they would speak words of love and encouragement to one sample of water and words of, of hate. And you can see the difference. The words of love, you can really see the power of your words. And I love this because in the word, actually, 
When Jesus came and died for us, it said that he washed us and it made us white as snow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it when science lines up with the word. There's literally the love that he poured out over us. Literally, when you speak life into somebody, it is like washing them with snow. You're bringing them from this polluted, contaminated, worldly view that they have, and you're bringing them into a new life. And I remember that when I got to a live church, just to show the power of these words. And I just prayed with somebody here right before, uh, right before the service started, and, and we were praying over her son. And just like my mother prayed for me, for 10 years. I want you to know that you can pray for your sons and your daughters and they will come back, amen? I want you to know that if you're having problems in your marriage, that you can speak words of life in your marriage. Come on, somebody. I want you to know that if you have worry and anxiety over Dorian, that you can speak over your family and that your words have power. Come on, somebody. I want you to know that if your sons and daughters have strayed, that they're going to come back because no weapon formed against them shall ever prosper. Amen. So I want you all to repeat this after me to drill this point home that your words have power. Say, my words words have power. power. My words have what? My words have what? Amen. Well, I love you, church. Y'all have an amazing day. Good morning. My name's Joanna, and I am so excited to be here this morning to kind of close out our five for five. Um, Before I do that, I just wanted to introduce my family. So you will see my three kids behind me. Um, They are literally my heartbeat. So I can't go and do a message without introducing them to you. My oldest just graduated high school, so we're in a new season of life. And then um, my daughter, Juliana, she's a freshman in high school, and then Hudson is six. So Chandler and Hudson graduated at the same time, kindergarten and high school. So we had a fun year. Um, And then the next slide is just my whole family, my husband, who keeps us all together, truly. So, um, So thank you guys for being here. So I just have been praying for weeks about this day. Um, I was super intimidated, not because of the crowd, not because I don't like to speak. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with there's a huge weight when it comes to speaking to a crowd like this because I have nothing to say to you, but the Holy Spirit does. And I knew that I needed to hear directly from him on what it was that you guys needed to hear. So for whatever reason, God chose for me to be um, very transparent today, and I'm going to share my story. It was unplanned. It was unexpected. At 16, I was pregnant. At 17, I decided to try to solve the whole thing with a marriage that maybe wasn't the best idea. However, we'll fast forward a little bit. Seven years later... I have two beautiful children, so God still knows what he's doing. Let's just remember that in this story. Now, I will say this. The challenge I was met with was these two precious gifts that God gave me that didn't ask for a broken family. They didn't ask for a divorced mom and dad, and yet God saw them through. The next thing that I realized, I look around me, and I'm the only person still standing with my kids. What am I going to do? How am I going to get through this season? I didn't have family close by. And all of a sudden, because God was the only thing left, now sometimes we have to wait till the very last second, you know, like we could turn to God immediately. I was the one that was like, oh, I don't have anybody. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) And that's okay. I'm a little slow sometimes. But because he was the only thing left, he truly became my husband, my protector, my provider, my counselor, my everything. So God knew that I was the kind of girl that needed to see it to believe it. And so he allowed some messes in my life. Some of them I created. Some of them were unfair and should never have happened. And yet he allowed them. Because he knew that the only way for me to be successful in life, successful as a parent, successful in a future marriage, was to get this thing right with Jesus. 
was to have him as my, as my everything. And so all of those things caused me to lean into him. There is an um, author that I absolutely love that I was reading her the other day, and this was an excerpt from her book. It says, sometimes the thing you would never choose for your life chooses you for a reason. And the thing that you would never pick picks you to be brave. And sometimes you get what you need by walking through what you never wanted. And the thing you never wanted may turn out to be the thing that you need the most. And the thing that may make you fall a bit apart may be part of what one day holds you together. So to bring scripture into this that was so similar to what she wrote, I love how Jesus puts it even better, but it's in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, and this is the message version. It says, so we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. So I'll close with this. Every tragic and difficult thing I walked through was nothing but a setup. Because God was bound and determined from the day that I was conceived that there was a purpose and a destiny on my life. Little did I know that God's great plan was that at 26 years of age, he was going to call me to found and start a ministry. That was in 2009. So let me tell you a little bit about where we were at that point. My kids and I were finally basking in the glow of a new marriage, a new family. (sighs) Deep breath, sigh of relief. The first time in my whole adult life that I felt secure and stable. Well, I only got about a month of that because I kept waking up in the night feeling unsettled in my spirit. You know that feeling where you're just, something's not right. And I'm going, God, what is this? I don't understand my life. There's everything's right right now. And God began to place just a huge burden in my spirit for the women who were me 10 years before that. And he said, write the vision and make it plain. And so slowly but surely, I wrote a vision. And it was a crazy vision. It was a crazy vision to say that there would never be another woman that has to walk through a situation not knowing that there was a God who loved her. That there would never be another woman who didn't have somebody standing by her side holding up her arms as she walked through a divorce or she's in domestic violence or abuse. And so 10 years later, I stand here today with a ministry in two different cities called Answers Health and Resource Facility, where we get to rescue the broken, hug the hurting. We get to see women healed from sexual abuse, drug addiction, domestic violence. And the deal is, God told me, You fight for them until they get to the other side. And what I'm here to tell you today is it is worth the fight. You might be where I was. You might be even worse in your mind than what I was talking about. You might be in a bad place right now, but that is not forever. Small potatoes. I know that's an old-fashioned saying, but it's the truth. God will use whatever you are going through right now, and he's not only going to use it, but he's going to use it to save other people, to minister to other people. So hang tight onto that. Lean into Jesus and just know that he is going to walk you through this, but you got to do it. You have to lean in. He's not going to force you. God is never going to pull you along, but he will walk with you. Come on. Can we give it up for our communicators this morning? Wasn't that good? Man, if you have been blessed, show them right now. Amen. So good. So good. Well, man, I'm just always amazed how God brings things together. You know, as I was reflecting on everything that was said today, um, it hit me. A big part of where, where we went today was surrender, giving God control. Maybe you're here and you say, Stephen, I've been walking with God for some time. 
But I realized today I haven't given him full control. I haven't let him take the wheel. I still wanna, wanna control things in my life. I wanna say today is your day to say, Jesus, take it all. I give it all to you. Maybe you're here and, and you're walking through circumstances, some maybe of your own doing, some maybe they've just been dropped in your lap. No fault of your own. And you connect it with what Joanna said. And it's, God, use this. Use what you've taken me through. Show me how to bless others on the other side of this. So if that's you today, would you bow your head and close your eyes? I want to pray with you. You say, I, I know God, but man, I was convicted today. I need, to, I need to surrender some things to him. God, I need to turn this over to you so you can use it in my life. Would you just raise your hand right now? I want to pray with you. Yeah, I see those hands. I see those hands. So many hands in this room right now. Heavenly Father, we just stop and we recognize right now that you are in complete control. Father, we give you our circumstances. We give you our situation in life. Use it for our good. Use it for others' good. Father, whatever your will is, bring that to fruition in our lives. May you be lifted up. May you be glorified. May you be our sole pursuit. We surrender to you today. We ask it in Jesus' name. I want to address some others in the room this morning. You may be here and you say, Stephen, you know, I'm hearing all this talk of surrendering to Jesus, and, and that's something I've never done. I've never truly given him my heart. I've never truly given him my life. You see, we, we all come into this world sinners. What do I mean by that? The Bible says that the wages of our sin is death. Sin is anything that you have done that is wrong. And I think if we're all honest today, we would have to admit we've done something wrong in our lives. But the great news today is that God sent his only son to take that penalty, to pay your price and my price. And that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So I want to give you that chance this morning. If you're here today and you say, Stephen, that's me. I've never made that, made that choice to follow Jesus. I want to take that step today. Would you raise your hand right now? Right now is your time. Raise your hand to follow Jesus. I see that hand. I see that hand. Come on. I see that hand. Are there others? I see that hand in the back. Come on. I want to follow Jesus. Today is my day. I see that hand. Now is my time. I'm going to follow Jesus starting right now. Are there any others? Here's the thing. No one prays alone at a live church. So I want you all to repeat this prayer with me this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place, taking my sins, taking my penalty. Come into my heart. Make me white as snow. I surrender to you. Be my Lord from this day forward. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that that message blessed you today. I know for me, God's word changed me. It changed me. It helped me overcome years of depression, sexual abuse, even poverty. And I just know that God's word is changing something for the better inside of you. Yeah, if this message today has blessed you in any way, you know the greatest compliment that you could ever give us would be to share this with someone else. You know, when I go out to a great restaurant, I don't want to keep it to myself. I want the world to know you got to go here to get that fried chicken and them sweet potatoes, man. <laughs> And so if this has been good groceries for you, if it's been good food, if it's been life transformation for you, do us a favor, share it with a friend, comment below, make sure that you subscribe to our channel today, and we hope we'll see you again real soon. God bless you. We'll see you soon.